All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to Digital Dreambox. Also, happy holidays. Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful holiday season so far. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at the NURBS curve. So I want to show you the different curve tools within Maya, uh, what the components of them are, and how to control the curve itself. Uh, let's not waste any more time though, and jump right in. All right, so let's learn a little bit about um, the Maya curve tools and their components. And um, we'll start off by making a curve. But before we start, you may have heard of the term NURBS curve before. And NURB stands for Non-Uniform Rational B-Splines. You don't have to memorize that, but just know that it's a mathematical model that uh, is used to represent curves and surfaces. And we use that for um, achieving curve modeling within uh, 3D programs. Um, why that's useful is that NURBS, uh, actually the concept of it extends outside of Maya. So you'll find it in um, engineering, automotive design, um, AutoCAD and other 3D programs as well. So if you ever transition to one of those fields or softwares, um, it's useful to have that um, base knowledge. All right, let's make our first curve. So I'm gonna go up to the Create tab and down here we have our curve tools and you'll see your selection of curve tools. Uh, I'm gonna work with the first one, which is the CV curve tool. So I'm just gonna select it. Actually, let me open up the option box and make sure this is reset. And luckily, luckily I checked. So now that these are the default settings and now I can just uh, close this up. All right, so um, I have my curve tool selected, and the first thing we wanna do actually is uh, go into one of the orthographic views, because if you plot points in the uh, perspective view, it'll try and connect it to the ground plane, and you won't really get the curve looking the way you want, um, at least not usually. So I'm gonna tap the space bar. This, this will open, <clears throat> whoa, almost choked for a second. This will open the four panel view, and then I'm gonna hover over either the front or the side view. I'll choose the front and tap the space bar again. There we go. And maybe I'll zoom in a little bit as well. All right, I'm gonna turn off the grid for this. I'll bring it back in a little bit, but for now I'll turn it off. And to create the curve, um, all we need to do is left click with the uh, mouse and I'll lay down a point. And then um, by default, the CV curve tool, which we selected, by the way, CV stands for control vertex in this case. Um, it'll plot a point down. This point that it plotted down is called a CV. So I'm gonna keep clicking. And by the time I get to my fourth point, you'll be able to see the curve. It's highlighted as white initially. And if I middle mouse click, I can actually move this point around. I'm going to keep clicking though, just continue this curve a little bit. And you can see now I have a blue section and a white section. At least in my um, on my interface, it's blue. I may have changed the color. Um, all right. So um, as you're laying down points, you can also hold down the left mouse button and you can um, change the position of that CV as well. And that's really great for really controlling the curvature as you're laying down these points. Um, if you put down a point you don't like, um, what you can do is press delete to delete your last point. And if you keep pressing delete, you'll start deleting the previous points as well. Uh, if you press escape, um, that will delete your curve entirely and you'll need to start over. So I'm gonna build out this curve again. So I'm gonna uh, lay down a point. Um, I'm actually gonna bring back the grid for a second. So if I want to snap a point to, actually I'm gonna press escape to start over. If I want to snap a point to um, an intersection on the grid, what I can do is first make sure the grid is enabled. So that's this icon over here. And then if you hold down X on the keyboard and hover to the closest intersection and left click, it'll snap to that. And if you want to um, lay a point in a straight line, hold down the shift key and you can lay down a point that way and then um, it'll make that straight. So there we go. Um, if I add a point up here somewhere, actually let me put down another straight point. So I'm gonna hold down shift, add another point, and now I have an, uh, one, two, three CVs. If I put a point up here, you'll notice that it's curving all the way to here. So from this point to this point is actually called a span. We'll cover that later, but just know that um, for a three degree curve, um, it needs three CVs plus one extra. So for example, a two degree curve would require three CVs, so two plus one. So this point here to this point here is the influence. So over here, if I move this, it gets influenced all the way to that point over there. All right, I'm just gonna build this out a little bit more. and we have something that looks sort of like a vase. Um, all right, so to complete a curve, um, what we can do is, we can do a few things. We can press Q 
or this icon here, Q is the same thing. It takes us to our select tool and that will complete this uh, curve. We can also um, press enter on the keyboard. That completes the curve as well. Or what I like to do is I'll hold down the right mouse button and I can complete tool and that will complete the curve. All right, and then afterwards you can move the CVs. We'll cover that in a bit. Um, for now, let's pop back to our perspective view. So I'm gonna tap the space bar, hover over the perspective panel and tap the space bar again. So in this view, we can see our curve in um, the perspective uh, camera, right? And we can orbit around it. So with the curve, it's just like a mesh as well. Well, it's not like a mesh, but we can treat it, uh, um, the transform tools, the same way. So with the curve, I can go into my move tool. I can move it. I can also rotate it and I can scale it as well. There we go. And that's pretty much how you create a curve. I'm just trying to see if I forgot anything, but I'll probably um, cover it if I did. So yeah, for now, I'm just going to delete this curve. All right, now let's take a look at the different components of the nerves curve. Let's go back to our front panel. So I'm going to tap the space bar. And there we go. And then um, the last tool we used was the CV curve tool, which we can find over here. Again, you can find your curve tools under create, curve tools, and CV curve tool. And I'm just going to plot out a few points. So one, two, three, and four. Now I can see my curve and I'll press enter to complete it. All right, so here's the curve. I'm going to select it and then I'm gonna hold down the right mouse, but mouse button. And then uh, we have some options here. So we can see curve point, control vertex, edit point, and hull. Let's start with the control vertex. So when we're plotting down points, what we're plotting down for the CV curve tool is the CV, so the control vertex. So one, two, three, and four. And to move our curve and uh, change the look of it, all we need to do is select one of these CVs and we can go into the move tool, right? And we can um, change the shape of the curve, just like that. If we select a couple points, we can even scale it if we want. And if we're in the um, perspective view, let me just hop over here real, real quick, we can also rotate these points. Just going to leave it the way it is. And then, yeah, so that's pretty much how you um, change the look of your, your curve. Um, so Maya will also let you know the start of the curve by um, indicating it with a square CV. So down here where we started, you can see that this CV is a square, so that's the start of the curve. And then the second one is a U. So that's very useful if you lose the direction your curve is running. Um, and then let's go to the hull next. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button and choose hull. Uh, before I do that, pay attention to where these CVs are, right? I'm gonna go hull, and you'll notice that um, we have some lines between each of those CVs. So Maya draws these lines to help us locate the CVs in case you have a scene that's really crowded and busy um, and you lose the location of those CVs. And also it's useful because we can see which direction the CVs are running. So we can see it's going in this direction. So if I were to take this CV and move it over here, right? I can see now my hull is showing the direction running this way. And if I want, I can move it back over here, but usually we're moving it through the CVs. All right, next let's take a look at the um, curve point. So this is the curve. And um, if I were to press three in the keyboard, we can see what it looks like smoothed out. I'm going to press one to go back for now. Um, if we select a point on the curve, so it's a little bit hard, but let me just go back to curve point. There we go. We will have a yellow dot. So that indicates the location at that point on the curve. So if I select a point over here, you can see I have a dot. It's sitting off the curve a little bit, but if I were to press three to go back to that smooth preview, you can see it's at that location. All right, just pressing one to go back. So we can select any of the points on the curve. We can hold down shift and select multiple points if we want, and we can hold down control and remove those points if we want as well. So by selecting points on the curve, um, that allows us to um, separate the curve into two curves if we want by detaching it, or it allows us to add knots if we want to make the curve turn a little sharper. So we'll cover that later on. Um, but for now, just know that you can select points on the curve. All right, and the last one over here is edit point. So edit point sounds like 
you know, points you can edit, but you actually don't want to change the look of your curve this way, like move those points around, maybe for minor adjustments, but usually we're using um, control vertex option to change the points. Edit points is indicating the, the span. So between um, these edit points is something called a span. So Maya requires additional spans as your curve becomes more complex to draw out that curvature. So let me just show you. So let's uh, grab our curve tool and I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Now I can see my curve, right? And I'm just gonna actually double click this to bring up the curve tool. We have that three degree curve, the cubic one, which I mentioned earlier, um, uh, requires three CVs plus one extra to draw out that initial curvature. When I lay down a fifth point, it's actually adding an additional span. So if I lay down another point, that's gonna be another span on top of it. So we have that initial one span, then we have a second span and a third span. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button to go to complete tool. And then I'm gonna make sure the curve is selected and I'm going to go to edit point and do a box select. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll point out the points for you. They're indicated by tiny um, um, X's, yellow X's. So I have one here, one here, one here, and one here. And between each of these points is one span. So I have one, which is that first four points, and then I have a second span and a third span. And um, as you adjust the CVs, right, the edit points will also move. So I'll do a box select and these points have moved around a little bit. So yeah, just remember, um, avoid, uh, I recommend avoiding moving these points unless you're making very small adjustments because it can get a little bit weird if you move it too much, right? So stick to um, adjusting your curve through the CVs. Um, and then one final thing is, I mentioned it also earlier, is that um, we can change the, de the degree of the curve, right? So if you want, um, say, a five degree curve, it will require six points, so five plus one extra, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, and that gives you extra points to control that curvature. Usually though, I'm working with just the um, default, the three degree curve, and I'm using it as the initial, um, sort of like the modeling, and then usually I subdivide it later anyhow, so three works for me, but if you want to work with a less degrees or higher, you can. There's also a linear curve if you wanna do like something more straight as well, but we'll cover that later on. So for now, I'm just going to just delete all these. I'm also going to reset this and close this up. But there you go, that covers the main components of the NURBS curve. All right, so let's do a quick run through of the different curve tools in Maya next, because what I really want to get to are some of these curve options over here to show you how to control the curve, which we'll save for the next part because this tutorial is getting a little bit long. So uh, let's go to the Create tab. Um, curve tools, and I'm going to tear this off. So we've been working with the CV curve tool, and with the CV curve tool, um, you're laying down the control vertices. So one, two, three, four, and here are your CVs that we plotted, and here's our curve. With the EP curve tool, it's a little bit different, so I'm just going to get rid of this one. I'm going to bring in the grid for this. With the EP curve tool, we're actually laying down the edit points, so the points on the actual curve itself. So I'm going to hold down X, snap a point to here, then I'm going to actually put a point here as well. Maybe I'll put a point up here and a point right here. right? And then I'm going to complete the tool. And you can see if I go into my edit points, it might be a little bit hard to see, but I can go edit points and I'll box select, go into my move tool so you can see it. We have a point here. We have another point here that I laid down here and here. So we have one, two, three spans, and um, these points are where I plotted them. With the EP curve tool, um, something to keep in mind is you still want to change the curve curvature through the CVs. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button to go to control vertex, and this is how you want to adjust it. Because if you try and move the edit points, that curve will get a little... Um, strange and funky. All right. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the EP curve tool. Um, I find, you know, like um, with the EP curve tool, if you have a reference and you want to plot exactly on the reference, that's kind of useful because you're 
basically um, creating the curve exactly how you want it to look. Um, I find the CV curve tool is more something I prefer personally though. All right, so now let's uh, go to the next one, which is the Bezier curve tool. This one here, if you come from Photoshop, it's going to be very familiar, right? We're gonna click, so lay down a point, then I'm gonna click and hold, so have something like that. And maybe I'll go over here, maybe I'll go up here, and we'll go down here, and one over here as well. So um, with the Bezier curve tool, um, you're, you have these Bezier handles. Um, if we open up the option box, we also have some options over here. I'm not an expert with this tool, so I don't really want to take you through a tutorial on how to use the Bezier curve tool, but um, there will be some tutorials out there that you can check out. But um, there's some ones over here. So for example, if I want to break a tangency, right, it's control plus left mouse button. I just have to find it over here and hold down control, left click, and I can break that. And now I can move that. We have something that looks a little bit like a wave, right? And when you're done with, with this um, curve, just hold down the right mouse button, go to complete tool, and you can actually go into the control vertices and you'll still have your Bezier handles that you can adjust. So I can rotate these, sorry, well, yeah, rotate, and I can move the handles to adjust it some more. All right, so that's the Bezier curve. Um, the pencil curve tool is a freehand curve tool. I don't use this that often, but um, if you use it in combination with um, the rebuild uh, feature, I find it's a little more useful, but I find the pencil curve tool um, gives me more points than I need. So, so I drew, drew out the curve. If I go into the control vertices, you can see I have a lot of CVs there. Um, I can still move those around and I can delete them. Um, so I can go into any of these, just delete them to reduce the number if I want. Um, but yeah, that's just the, a freehand curve tool for you to use if you like. You can get rid of that. Um, I might do a demonstration with one of these in the next part. Um, next one is the three-point arc, circular arc. And with this one, we lay down two points, so one, two. That distance is going to uh, be consistent. And then with the third one, we'll be able to see our arc and we'll be able to control um, the circular, so how circular that is. And we can move this if we want, we can reduce it, um, and we can adjust the radius by just moving this in. So uh, it's a little more for if you're doing more mathematical modeling, this one comes in very handy. So here we go, I'm just gonna delete that. And then the two point circular arc, this one, you just need two points and you'll have this. And with this one, you can flip it the other direction by clicking here and you can adjust it over here as well. And of course you can adjust it here. And then when you're ready, you can just press enter or complete tool. Right. So there we go. And you have your arc. So yeah, that was a very quick run through of the curve tools in Maya. And then in the next part, we will cover um, some of these over here to uh, really uh, show you how you can control your curve. So uh, see you all then.